All right, guys, for the last couple of days, we have been actually going over some stuff that you have learned out of algebra. And let's kind of start to go ahead and go back over that. Who can tell me what is the midpoint formula? Who can tell me that real quick? Right here, uh, Ms. Thanemar, what we say is the midpoint formula? X sub 2 plus X sub 1 over 2, comma, Y sub 2 plus Y sub 1 over 2. Perfect. X sub 1 plus X sub 2 over 2, comma, Y sub 1 plus Y sub 2 over 2. And yesterday, we even kind of said, hey, if you look at it, all we're really doing is averaging the distance of the x and averaging the distance of the two y coordinates, correct? Now, also, we discussed how can we find distance between two points in a coordinate plane, and to do that, we use something called the distance formula. We discussed that. Who can tell me what is the distance formula? Formula. Who can tell me that? Brady Brock. Uh, D equals, and then like the square root thing. Okay. And then parentheses, x2 minus x1 parentheses squared plus uh, parentheses y2 minus y1 equal or parentheses and then squared. That is correct. We said that the distance formula is the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. And yesterday, even our intern, Mr. Carter, he told us that, hey, where do we derive the distance formula from? And many of you looked at me like we did today, and we derived the distance formula from the Pythagorean theorem. So we actually derived this from the Pythagorean theorem. And then also, we started talking about slope. We started talking about slope. Now, who can tell me how can I find the slope between two points in a coordinate plane? Now, what if I only give you the coordinates, the coordinate points, and I don't give you the graph? How can I find that? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X2. That is correct. Y2 minus X1 over X2 minus X1. And yesterday, Hunter gave us a perfect definition. And he said that definition of slope was the change in Y over the change in X. So then we came and we started trying to compare and we started talking about figures. We started talking about triangles. Who can tell me what is an equilateral triangle? That is correct. It's a triangle that has three congruent sides. All sides congruent. Then we talked about an isosceles triangle. Who can tell me what an isosceles triangle is? At least two congruent sides. Now, the biggest thing that we took away from that is that an isosceles triangle is a triangle that has at least, it has at least two sides that are equal. And then I asked you, I said, so does that mean that an equilateral triangle is also an isosceles triangle? Yeah, it is, because the fact is, an equilateral triangle has three equal sides. And to be an isosceles triangle, you have to have a minimum of two sides, correct? And then we started getting into uh, determining and taking these figures, these triangles, and starting to determine how we can prove these triangles to be either equilateral or to be perpendicular. And then that brought us back to slope, didn't it? Because we can do a lot with our slope, can't we? We can determine a lot of things from slope. Now, if two lines are parallel, what do we know about the slopes of those lines? That is correct. Their slopes are the same. They're equal. Now, two lines are perpendicular, and who can tell me what does it mean to be perpendicular? If two lines are perpendicular, they are what? They're intersecting at a 90 degree angle. That is correct. They intersect at a 90 degree angle. That means they form a right angle. So if I have two lines that are perpendicular, what do I know about their slope? They're opposite reciprocal to each other. That is awesome. 
They are opposite reciprocals of each other. They are opposite reciprocals of each other. Now, let's back up, and who can tell me, what is a good definition for parallel lines? What is a good definition for parallel lines? Two lines that never intersect, they never cross, and they're in the same plane, correct? Now, so that leads us to where we were yesterday. That leads us to where we were yesterday. And yesterday, we ended on these examples. So we're going to back up and we're going to look at example one and we're going to look at this example. Now, example one asked us to use the distance formula to show the triangle below as an isosceles triangle. And we did this one yesterday, and who can tell me what do we have to do to determine and use the distance formula to determine that this is an isosceles triangle? Who can remember what we had to do? Prove that A, B, and the B, C were uh, equal. So what, what Ms. Smith said, we had to prove using the distance formula that the distance between A, B and that the distance between B, C were the same distance. And we did that. First, what do we have to do to do that? We have to get the coordinates. That's right. We had to go to our points, and we actually had to pick up the coordinates, didn't we? And then we took those coordinates, and we plugged it into our distance formula, and we started proving that AB and BC had the same length. Now, who can remember yesterday when we got the length? What do we say the length of AB and BC were? That is correct. We said their lengths were the square root of 5, and when we did that, some of you kind of looked at me like, huh, the square root of 5? And why did I say we were just going to leave it as the square root of 5? Because what do we know about the square root of 5? It's irrational. That's a good answer. It's irrational, and when she's about to tell us the definition, and the irrational numbers are numbers that keep going and going and going without what? Without repeating digits. Without terminating. So to represent that distance perfectly, we leave it at the square root of 5. Now, then, we ended yesterday on example 2. And we're about to dive into example 2. And it says, which formula is needed to show the triangle below is a right triangle? And now, when we kind of look at it right now, it kind of don't even look like a right triangle, does it? It's not, doesn't really look like a right triangle in the way that we typically see it. Because we would typically see a right triangle look something like this. Or something like this. And that right triangle will indicate with this right angle in the corner. Well, in this case, we don't have that, do we? We don't have that. So what we have to do is to determine, okay, which angle, is it going to be angle A, angle C, or angle B, that's possibly going to be my right angle? And kind of just kind of observing and looking over it, I kind of see where possibly angle C could possibly be a right angle. But I still cannot call it a right triangle if I cannot prove it to be so. So what formula would help me prove that triangle ACB is a right triangle? What formula could I use? Midpoint. Midpoint. That is a great try. Midpoint. But let's look at this, Brady. I'm trying to prove what kind of angle here? Right. 90 degrees. What if, if two lines intersect and they create 
a 90 degree angle, we say those two lines are what? I, I hear it. They're perpendicular, aren't they? They're perpendicular. So if I can prove line AC is perpendicular to line CB, then I know they create what kind of angle? A right angle. And then I can call that triangle a right triangle. So what formula could I use to do that right here. I can find the slopes, can I? Because if I can find the slope of line AC and the slope of line CB, and if those slopes are what? Opposite, Opposite reciprocals of each other, then I know those two lines are perpendicular and then they create a right angle and I have what? Voila, a right triangle. Because by definition, a right triangle is a triangle that has one what? Right. One right, one right angle or 90 degrees. And so yesterday, we did that. So, let's go ahead and let's do it again today. Let's prove that, I mean, that's where we were, so let's go ahead and let's prove to see if this is a right angle. So we're going to use the slope formula. So before we do that, what do you think we need to do? We need to find the coordinates of my points and my triangle. So I know it's kind of hard for y'all to see. So I'm going ahead and help you. We know that point A is at point zero, zero. I know point C is at two comma two. And I know that point B is at four comma zero. So let's find the slope of line or segment AC. And again, how do I find slope? Between two points? Oh, uh, y2 minus y2 minus x2 minus x2. I'll give you that. Y2. So the slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's look at our two points. Let's look at point A. I'm going to say point A, I'm going to consider my point 1. A is at 0, 0, meaning that my x coordinate for point 1 is 0, and my y coordinate for point 1 is 0. So I'm going to consider for AC my second point, point 2, point C. I know that C is at 2, 2, and that means that my X sub 2 is at 2, and my Y coordinate for point 2 is at 2. So let's use this information, and let's substitute them back into the formula for slope. So when we do this, we get Y2, which is 2, minus y1, which is 0, over x2, which is 2, minus 0. Then working out the math, we get 2 minus 0 is 2, over 2 minus 0 is 2. This gives me a slope of, what's 2 divided by 2? Positive 1. So the slope of segment AC is positive 1. So I have the slope of segment AC to be positive 1. So for CB to be perpendicular to AC, the slopes need to be opposite reciprocals of each other. So what would be the opposite reciprocal of positive 1? Say it louder. Negative 1. So I am looking for segment CB to have a slope of negative 1. So let's find it. So 
So we have the slope of segment CB. Again, we know that the slope formula is uh, the change in y over the change of x, or we say is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And so we're going to call point C, we're going to call that our point number one. And point C is located at 2, comma 2. So that gives me the x coordinate for the first point is 2, and the y coordinate for the first point is 2. And then our second point, we're going to call point B, and that's at 4, 0, and that gives me the x coordinate of point 2 is 4, and the y coordinate for point 2 is 0. So, someone help me. What, I, what kind of slope am I, am I expecting segment CB to be? Is it positive, negative, 0, or undefined? Negative. Why do you say negative? Because from left to, from left to right, it's going down. You got it. From left to right, it's going downhill. If you notice, line AC going left to right is going uphill, and we've got a positive one slope. We've got a positive slope. So this one is kind of looking like, hey, this might work out. I've got the opposite part because guess what? Segment CB is going downhill left to right, so I know it's a negative. And so I'm expecting when I plug these values in to get a negative number, right? So that's also, if you think about it, that's a good way to look at a check as well. Hey, it's going downhill left to right, and I know that's a negative slope. So when I do my calculation, guess what? My slope should be negative. And if by chance, you turn up with a positive slope in your calculation, you might want to revisit that calculation. Okay, you might have made a small mistake. So let's plug these values in. I get 0 minus 2 over 4 minus 2. And this gives me 0 minus 2 is uh, negative 2. And 4 minus 2 is two. positive 2. And who can tell me negative 2 divided by 2 is what? Negative 1. Negative one. So we have the slope of segment CB equal to negative 1. And you already told me that positive 1 and negative 1 are opposite lots of each other. And since they're opposite reciprocals, what do I know about segment AC and CD? Uh, they're, they're perpendicular. That means they form a right angle. So, let's answer the question. What formula did I need to use to show this triangle to be a right triangle? Slope. All I had to use was a slope formula. Yes. You can you can put C B because why? Because C B and B C are the same segment, right? But okay, you're fine. Good question, huh? They're the same. Okay, everybody got it? Any questions? Do you have any questions? Alright, if you get it, give me a thumbs up. That's what I need to see. Alright, who's kind of right here? Who's on the fence with this thing? Alright, nobody on the fence. And I'm going to take it. I have no thumbs down, right? No thumbs down. Good job. Let's look at example number three. If you will, please click example number three. All right, let's read example number three. Example number three says, using the ideas presented in these two previous examples, example one, example two, so we can put on our thinking caps and use those two ideas. In example one, what formula did we use? Who can remember that? Distance. We used the distance formula. In example two, what formula did we use? Slope. We used the slope. So what they're asking, use the distance formula or the principle of the distance formula and the principle of the slope formula. 
to describe a method that can be used to tell if a triangle is equilateral. So using example one or example two, what can I use to determine a triangle to be equilateral? I can use the distance formula. Now, let's go a little deeper with that. What would you need to do? Let's say, for example, I throw up on the board triangle. Let's call this triangle A, triangle B, triangle C. And I said, hey, let's try and let's prove this to be equilateral or not equilateral. Okay. Maddie already said, hey, Mr. Casper, I can use the distance formula to do that. So let's take it a little deeper. Let's take this thing almost step by step and tell me what would you do first. Okay, first I would find the coordinates, okay? So Maddie, you're froze right now. So she's already answered two parts of this. She says, hey, I'm going to use the distance formula. And the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to find the coordinates of point A. I'm going to find the coordinates of point B. And then I'm going to find the coordinates of point C. So what would you do next with those coordinates? Okay, Miss Smith, you're going to plug them in. We're going to plug them into what? We're going to plug them in the distance for me. So what you're trying to tell me says, hey, Mr. Casper, take the coordinates of point A and the coordinates of point B, plug those X and Y coordinates into the distance for me and get what? Get the distance of AB, right? So first, you would take your coordinates and get the distance of AB. What would I do next? Somebody, come on, help me, anybody. You're right. Take the point, the coordinate from CB that you've already got, and then you find the distance for CB. What would I need to do? Am I, am, can I determine if it's equilateral from this right here? No, because equilateral, I need what? I need three equal sides, don't I? The only thing I can do is kind of determine, okay, is it isosceles? If it's not isosceles, because all I've done was what? Two sides. So what What I need to do now, Taylor? That's right. I need to do the same thing with AC. I will need to take the coordinates for A and C, plug it into my what formula? My distance formula, and determine the distance for AC. So once I have all these distances, once I have all these distances, Mr. Callaway, what, to be equilateral, what would I need to know about these distances? All these distances need to be what? They need to be the same length. And if they all turn out to be the same length, I can say they're what? I can say the triangle is equilateral. Okay? Any questions on that? Now, I do agree. Hey, Mr. Casper, that's a lot of work. That's the distance formula, and if you can remember, Distance equals the square root x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. And I'm plugging that in three different times. I get it. It's a lot of work. But what I'm saying, I can use a simple distance formula to determine if a triangle is equilateral. Because remember in the beginning of the year, I said I never can look at a triangle and just say, hey, this triangle is a right triangle or a right, or look at an angle and say it's a right angle because I think it's what? I think it's perpendicular or I think it forms one. In geometry, we have to do what? We have to prove everything, don't we? So what we're learning now is how to use basic formulas to prove our basic shapes. Okay. All right, let's look at our next slide. Now, you're fine. Now, it says let's cla classify quadrilaterals using distance and slope. Now, before we start talking about and going back and reviewing some properties of quadrilaterals, uh, 
using distance and slope. The question I want to look at, and we're just going to think about this. We're going to think about it because we're going to answer this question. It says a football field. So here we have a football field on the very far right. A street sign and a kite are all commonplace objects you see on a regular basis. It seems obvious that these objects form the geometric shapes of a rectangle, a rhombus, and a kite. The question is, do we know how to prove it? So can we prove them that way? And that's what we're here to do. The first thing I told you on day one of geometry, we're here to prove this stuff. We're not going to take that, hey, this football field is a rectangle. We're going to prove that the football field is a rectangle. I'm not going to say, hey, that street sign is a rhombus. We're going to prove that it's a rhombus. And that, you know, the kite that we've been flying all these years, I'm just not going to say, hey, that kite is in form in the shape of a kite. We're going to prove that it's in the shape of a kite. So let's look at this. It says, how would you prove the football field is in the shape of a rectangle? So we're going to take a poll. And they give us some ideas. So here you'll have the picture of a football field. So imagine that they actually give you a picture of a football field. And it's edited perfectly and only the outline of the whole football field is in the picture. Okay? It says, how would you prove the football field is in the shape of a rectangle? What would you do first? It says, would you use a measuring tape, a yardstick, to measure? Would you take the picture and overlay it on a grid? Now think about a grid, graph paper. Would I use a protractor to try to determine if it's a rectangle? Or would I construct a scale model? to determine if it is. Now, so all we're going to do is take a poll and see kind of where we stand in this survey. Now, how many of you say, use a measuring tape or yardstick to measure? All you simply do is raise your hand. All right, so we have zero here. So we most definitely know we're not going to choose that one, right? Zero of y'all saying, hey, Mr. Casper, use a measuring tape or yardstick to measure. How about take the picture, overlay it on a grid or graph paper? How many of y'all say that's what we need to do? Nobody. Okay, so we know that is not a part of the survey. How many of y'all say use a protractor? Fine. We've got one. we got one student that raises their hand and says, hey, I'm going to use a protractor. And kind of what I'm thinking, why they're going to use a protractor, because what are they going to do? Measure what? The they're going to measure the angles. Because many of y'all know... What? That a rectangle has what? Right angles. How many? Four. four right angles. So Miss Smith says, hey, I'm going to take that protractor and I'm going to measure those four angles. And if they're both right angles, guess what? I'm pretty good to say that should be a rectangle, right? Now, so I'm thinking, since I have zero people, zero and one, that many of y'all are saying, hey, we're going to construct a scale model, right? All right. If you will, let's click construct a scale model and let's put our vote in. So as of, this, as of today, you voted 39.22% of the population took the survey today. Guess what? Y'all are in agreement with them. Okay? So this is not 100% what we do. It's not the end-all tell-all. Okay? So, let's slide down to the bottom. So, one thing I want us to do before we move into how we would actually take that football field, and let's try to prove it to be a quadrilateral, let's take a few minutes and let's review characteristics of quadrilateral. So, let's look at question number one. So, we know that a rhombus is a quadrilateral because a quadrilateral is any shape that has how many sides? Four sides. And we know that a rhombus has four sides. Now let's play the game. So we're going to choose, and 
I will mark them off as we disagree, the characteristics. So a rhombus, it says only has one pair of parallel sides. One pair. So let's think about a rhombus. It looks like a diamond. So it's saying it only has one pair of parallel sides. So it's really saying something like that. That just this, these sides are parallel. Is that true? No, it's not true. Two pairs of parallel sides. You're right. There's two pair of parallel sides in a rhombus. Okay. So that <coughs> one is true. Now, how about congruent angles? In a rhombus, are all angles 90 degrees? No. No, because if all angles are 90 degrees, we would call that what? We'll call it a rectangle or mainly a square, right? So, no. How about congruent sides? All sides are equal in a rhombus. Huh? No? Because isn't a rhombus nothing more than a square without 90 degrees? And what do we know about a square? All sides are equal. So, a rhombus, we know all sides are equal. Now, I'm going to help you here. It says two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. Two pair of adjacent congruent sides. Well, most of you go, well, Mr. Casper, if they're all sides congruent, wouldn't we have this side and this side are adjacent, this side and this side are adjacent, and they're congruent? I agree. But is that a main characteristic of a rhombus? No, it's not. Then it says congruent legs. Now, in a square, in a rhombus, do we call their sides legs? The only thing we really call legs are what kind of shape? Triangles. Right? So no. So for rhombus, the main two characteristics are two pairs of parallel sides and congruent sides, meaning all sides are equal. Right? So that leads us, if y'all will slide down, that leads us to a square. So a square, much like a rhombus, it says only uh, one pair of parallel sides, true or false? False, good job. So we do have two pair of parallel sides in a square. Congruent angles, all angles are 90 degrees, true or false? True. This is the difference, one of the big differences for squares and rhombuses. Congruent sides, all sides are equal. Yes, that is true, good job. Now, two pair of adjacent congruent sides and congruent legs. Again, this is just like a rhombus. This is not a major characteristic. And we're dealing with a square. We call squares or quadrilateral sides, not legs. Triangles, we have legs, okay? So the three main characteristics we should be remembering about our squares, two pairs of parallel sides, congruent angles, all equal 90 degrees. Congruent sides, all sides are Now, let's look at our parallelogram. It's not the best one, but we get through it. Parallelogram, it's another quadrilateral. It says it has only one pair of parallel sides. True or false? False. So it has two pair of parallel sides, correct? Mm -hmm. 
So we have opposite sides or parallel. Congruent angles all equal 90 degrees. True or false? False. False. If they all had 90 degree angles, that would be more of a what? Rectangle. Correct. Congruent sides. All sides are equal. All sides are equal. No, they're not. No, they're not. Now, it says two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. Two pair of adjacent congruent sides. Meaning that this side and this side, they're adjacent and they're congruent. Is that true? No. What do we know about parallelograms? What sides are congruent? Opposite sides. I just heard it. Opposite sides are congruent. Right? Opposite sides are congruent. And then we do away with congruent legs. So here, two pairs of parallel sides for parallelogram, but also I want you to know for this one that opposite sides are congruent. Okay, opposite sides are equal. Let's look at question number four. So let's look at a rectangle. On one pair of parallel sides, true or false? False. We have two pairs of parallel sides. It would be the top is parallel to the bottom, and the left side is parallel to that right side. Our opposite sides parallel. All angles equal 90 degrees. True or false? True. 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 All sides equal. No, because we already know if all sides are equal, what? It's a square. It's not a rectangle. So again, with this one, it will be opposite sides are equal, or we say they're congruent. Okay? If we will, let's go to the next slide, please. Now, let's get back to our football field. So we're going to take a look at this football field. Most people can look at this image and say that the field creates a rectangle, but only you, my wonderful geometry students, can prove that it's a rectangle. Now, to prove that this is a rectangle, I need two main things. What do I need to prove? I need to use slope, and slope's going to help me prove what? Right. Prove right angles, right? So I'm looking for what kind of slope of two lines? Opposite. Opposite uh, reciprocals. reciprocals. Then also, what do I know about their lengths? Opposite sides are equal. So I will also use what formula? The distance formula and prove that my opposite sides are what? The same length or congruent, correct? So, let's slide down. So look at the first step. Anybody recognize this step from our survey? It says the first thing you will do is overlay a coordinate plane on top of the image. That's the same thing as doing what? Overlay a grid, right? Overlay a grid, it's a lot easier, correct? Because if I overlay a grid, then I can match up coordinates for my vertices, correct? Correct? So now, and what do we know about opposite sides? Opposite sides are what? They're congruent and they're also what? 
They're the same length. They're also what? Parallel. Parallel. Correct? So the first thing that I want to do, let's find out the slopes of all my sides. Because with the slope, what can I do? I can determine if they form right angles, and I can also determine if they're what? If the slopes are the same, I can determine my opposite sides being parallel, correct? So, let's find the slope of AB using our slope formula. Let's go ahead and click that. I see that the slope of AB is zero, and then for the slope of CD, that's the bottom line. Let's go ahead and scroll down. I see that it's zero. So if slope AB is zero and slope of CD is zero, well, what can I say about those two sides? They're parallel. They're parallel. So let's look at the slope of BC and DA. I see that BC is undefined and also see that the slope of DA is undefined. Their two slopes are the same. What can I say about those two segments? They're parallel. Now here's a hint. What kind of line has a slope of zero? Raise your hand if you can tell me. Horizontal. A horizontal line. What kind of line has a slope that's undefined? A vertical, line. a vertical line. So what if a true horizontal and a true vertical line intersect? What do they create? They create a right angle. So what we are concluding is that if a line has zero slope and another line has undefined slope, then they are what to each other? They're perpendicular. Okay? Now, we'll scroll down a little. So this is what we're getting at. So as you can see, side A, B, and side C, D have exactly the same slope and B, C, and D, A also have the same exact slope, so I can say that the quadrilateral A, B, C, D is a parallelogram because why? Because opposite sides are parallel. Then furthermore, since I know that the two adjacent sides have opposite reciprocal slopes, or in this case, one slope is zero and the other one's undefined, then I know those two lines are what? Perpendicular to each other, meaning they form right angles and therefore, I can now call my parallelogram a rectangle. Correct? Or even a square. Because I haven't done what yet? I haven't turned the length of the sides, have I? No. All right, if you will, take it to the next slide. So finally... I need to do what? I need to determine, use my distance formula, and let's determine the length of my sides, right? Well, since it's on the grid and I have horizontal vertical lines, finding distance is pretty easy, right? All I have to do is count the grid. That's why one thing, put it on a grid, it's a lot easier, right? So, I can find the distance of my vertical lines right here. So I can simply either just count the grid, or since I'm going horizontal, I can find the difference of my x coordinates, right? Correct? So what's 10 minus 8? Or 10, 10 minus negative 8? I have a distance of 18 units. And the same thing here. What is 10 minus negative 8? 18 units. And now my vertical lines, I can find the distance simply by doing what? Finding the difference since it's vertical of just what? The y coordinates, that's correct. So, what is five minus negative three? Positive eight units. And the same thing, five minus negative three gives me positive eight units. So now, 
since I had boiled it down to a rectangle or a square, now I can keep square out, right? Because in a square, all sides are what? That's right, they're the same. But this now meets the definition of a rectangle because what we have, we have opposite sides are congruent or have the same measure, correct? So a rectangle, we know that opposite sides are congruent. They're also what? Parallel. And then what do we know about all the angles? They're right angles. So what you have done, you've used two formulas to prove this football field, this figure, this quadrilateral, to be a rectangle. All right, next slide. Next slide here. Uh, go on to the next slide. So let's look at a practice real fast. Let's look at problem number one. It says classify, so what I want us to do is actually just go over those these real quick before I cut you loose on your homework assignment. Let's look at this. It says first I have a triangle. It says let's classify the following triangle as either equilateral, right, or isosceles. Now, first and foremost, what formula am I going to use? And how would I do this? Well, someone says you slow. Well, we'll use distance first, wouldn't we? Because kind of looking at it right now, I'm not going to say it's not a right angle triangle. I'm not going to say that. But kind of just at first glance, I'm looking at it, and I'm going, it don't look like a right triangle, does it? But I'm not saying it's not. So I would use distance formula, wouldn't I? And determine the length of these sides. That will kind of be my first attack. And if I find that the three sides are equal, what do I know? I know it's equilateral. If I only find two sides equal, I know it's what? Isosceles. Now, if those two items come up and I cannot determine that, then I would go and use slope, right? Then I would try to find that angle that might possibly be a right angle, right? So in this one, which one would you say, well, it's the closest one that looks like a right angle. D, possibly D. So then I would use slope formula and find the slope of ED and the slope of FD, correct? And if these are opposite reciprocals, then I know it would be a right triangle, correct? Kind of just a, we're making a plan of attack. Well, if you will, let's look at the, let's find the slopes, it says. So we're determining the slopes. Go ahead and click it. Now, if you can tell, we're finding the slopes of DF, and I find that the slope here is one third. And then I found the slopes of DE, and look what I find the slope to be negative three. Now, one third and negative three are what? Opposite reciprocal. Since they're opposite reciprocals, that means those two lines form what? They're perpendicular and they form a right angle, meaning that this triangle is actually what? A right triangle. All right, go back and let's click the second problem. So here I'm given quadrilateral Z, Y, X, W. So, and it has vertices at the following ordered pairs. 1, 0, 6, negative 3, 1, negative 6, and negative 4, negative 3. Now, if you want to, you can get out some of your graph paper that you were asked to at the beginning of the year to purchase, and you actually can set up a coordinate plane, couldn't you, and actually plot these points on your graph paper. So you actually can put a grid over it, right? That would help you. Now, do we have to use a grid, graph paper? No, because we're getting the point. And it asks what type of quadrilateral. So really I'm looking at two types of, or three types of quadrilateral. I'm looking for a rectangle, a rhombus, or a parallelogram. So going back to those characteristics of those three uh, quadrilaterals, I'm going to start trying to work my way through it, right? 
So the first plan of attack, we're going to find the slopes. So uh, first, we can draw that figure. So let's go ahead and find the slopes. So the slope of ZY is negative 3 fifths. So let's look at the slope of XW going through the slope formula. The slope of XW is negative 3 fifths. So let's go back up. So we have negative 3 fifths, negative 3 fifths. Then we got the slope of XY is positive 3 fifths, and the slope of WZ is positive 3 fifths. So let's go back up to the original question. So if we lay this out, I have ZY. I have YX, then we go XW, and then we finish with WZ. Okay? So we've got ZY is negative 3 fifths. Slide down again. XW is negative 3 fifths. And then we have yx is 3 fifths, and then zw is 3 fifths. What do we know about this, 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 and this? We know that opposite sides are the slopes are, are the same, so therefore I know that it's going to fall into what, a parallelogram, a square, or a rectangle, right? Now, question, can I eliminate rectangle? Are these slopes, are they opposite reciprocals? No, they're not. Because if this is negative 3 fifths, the opposite reciprocal of negative 3 fifths is what? Positive 5 thirds. So therefore, I know it's not. Then we would determine the distance, correct? And if the distance are different, what would I say? I would say it's a what? It's a parallelogram, correct? All right, guys, don't forget, you got your homework. It's loaded on Canvas, due on Sunday. Y'all have a great weekend.